We help people save marriages that other people say are impossible to save. We love doing that. We love helping people put families back together. And by the grace of God, we have a pretty good success record at it. As a matter of fact, phenomenal. Yet at the same time, even though we are so pro-marriage, we realize that there are occasions when a person needs to walk away from a marriage. Well, when is that? Well, we'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. I'm Dr. Joe Beam with Marriage Helper, along with Kimberly Holmes, our CEO, our leader, who guides us to help more and more couples every year. And Kimberly and I will talk about it in a few minutes. When is it time, if ever, to walk away from a marriage because of infidelity? This is Relationship Radio, an extension of Marriage Helper International. Hosted by renowned marriage and relationship expert, Dr. Joe Beam and CEO of Marriage Helper, Kimberly Beam Holmes. We answer your questions directly with research-based principles that you can implement immediately. Regardless of the situation, what we teach will not only make your relationships better, but will also help you to become the best version of yourself along the way. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to turn on notifications. Turn up the volume and prepare to take notes as we begin this week's episode of Relationship Radio. We assume that you're watching this video because of the fact that your spouse has been unfaithful. Infidelity has occurred, and we're very sorry for that. At this point, you're thinking, well, should I try to put the marriage back together or should I listen to all my friends and just walk away because cheaters are always cheaters. They'll never change, et cetera, et cetera. Well, Kimberly, we work with a tremendous number of families. About how many marriages did we work with in 2020, for example? 10,000 in 2020. 10,000 families in 2020. So we have a great deal of experience in working with marriages. And we've been doing this. I've been leading workshops for marriages in crisis since 1999. So at whatever point you're listening to this or watching this, just subtract back to it, 1999, and you'll see how many years we've been doing it with a tremendous amount of success. So we know what it's like, the pain that you feel, the hurt, the agony that you've gone through. And we also know that in all likelihood, people who love you are really, really mad at your spouse who cheated on you because they love you so much they can't stand seeing you hurt. And therefore, the things they think and the things they say about your spouse to you probably are mostly negative. Like, you know, as I just said, you can never trust him or her again. And, and that person's evil and you deserve better and so forth and so on. Well, Understand this, your friends and family typically aren't the best advisors. No, not because they're bad people, not because they don't have wisdom, but because of the fact that they love you so much that they will likely be biased. And in their bias, they'll give you advice that's not the best advice, but they think it is, they believe it is, that's why they give it to you. So what do you do then? If you really want to decide one way or the other, Okay, I'm not going to listen to my family or friends. I'm going to try to make a decision as to whether or not to put this marriage back together. Now, it may be because of the fact that your spouse who has cheated is trying to put things back together with you, or it may be because of the fact that you have seen some of the success that we've had working with couples and thinking, well, there's some things I can do that can possibly lead us to put this marriage back together. So Kimberly, what kind of things should they be thinking about? as they make a decision, should I accept the fact that the other one's trying to put it back or should I try to put it back myself? Uh, what kind of things should they be thinking about after our spouse's infidelity? One of the things I have always loved whenever I hear mom talking about her decision process and whether or not she was going to take you back is she asked herself the question, was Joe a good person who had done some bad things or was he a bad person who had done bad things? And she ended up taking you back because she knew you were a good person who had done some bad things, but she believed that you deserved to be rescued and it deserved to give it a second shot, especially because of the kids that were involved, which I was not one yet, but I'm sure glad it happened. Otherwise, I would not be here right now. So, exactly. So that's what and, and she went against the advice of all of her friends and family. Mm -hmm. But that was a question. And, and she asked herself, so now we ask people that all the time when they say, well, 
should I try to save this marriage? Well, obviously you make that decision. We can't make it for you. But is your spouse a good person doing a bad thing or a bad person doing a bad thing? If, if you're convinced they're, they're just bad and that they've demonstrated that not just through this, but through many other things, then you're not going to be able to rescue them because people we're using it in kind of a broad sort of way here, but people who are, who just use others, who don't care about the pain they cause other people that are always going to live selfishly for themselves. We're calling those people bad people. And even if you try to save the marriage, even if you put it back together, it's going to wind up bad again because that person isn't who he or she should be. Now, if they, if they find God, if they get the right kind of mentor, those kinds of things, and they change wonderful, but you can't be making that decision based on what you think might happen in the future. The question is, do I really believe this is a good person now doing a bad thing or a bad person? So that's the first thing we bring about. Okay. What else did we ask people to think about when it comes to this kind of thing? Another, another thing that we encourage people to think about is, okay, so if you made the decision to leave now, how would that affect your life in what we call 10, 10, 10? So how would it affect your life in the next 10 days, in the next 10 months, or in the next 10 years? And to really think about the long-term effects of the decision that they can make today. And you can also think of that on the flip side. So you can also think if I stay, then how would that affect my life in 10 days and 10 months and in 10 years? And I encourage people to not fly through this exercise, but to really sit with each of these for a period of time, because it's a huge decision. It shouldn't be made in the heat of the moment or on the fly. It really needs to be carefully considered. When you look at the research, there is so much benefit to staying married and in making your marriage work. There are so many negative things that can occur when divorce happens and people don't tend to think of those things because in the moment they're feeling so much current pain that they think it doesn't matter. I'll figure that part out after the divorce when I'm happy again, but there's a whole nother mess of things that happen on the other side of divorce. So really make sure that you are thinking through all of the possible options. Yeah. Susie Welch wrote a book called 10, 10, 10. That's where we got the idea from. Uh, so think, how am I going to feel about it in 10 days, 10 months and 10 years, but not just for you. How is it going to affect others that are important to you? So for example, if you have children, how will they be affected by this in 10 days? What about 10 months? What about 10 years? And if you think that it doesn't affect kids, go to a divorce, even if you're totally justified in getting it, getting a divorce, you need to understand that there's ample research, hundreds and hundreds of scholarly research articles done around the world about the effect that divorce has on children. Now, I'm not saying that they're going to be doomed. Don't misunderstand, but don't think that it's not going to affect them. And so if you can think through what about 10 days, 10 months, 10 years, and if you think, well, I'll just ask my counselor or therapist about that, that's good. But if your counselor or therapist says, don't worry about the children, don't think about the children, you just do what makes you happy. The children would be fine. We strongly recommend you find another counselor who is up on the research because it's going to cause some problems. I was just reading another research study today of recent research done on the gray divorce that said that actually, even when people get divorced in their 50s and 60s, once their children are adults and they think it has no impact or less impact on the kids, we are still seeing that it has a huge impact and that mothers are more likely to spend twice the amount of time with their adult children after a divorce happens, which may or not may or may not be good for the kids. But the and then the fathers, this is what's so striking. Fathers half the time. So even though they're adults and they've been in their life for 20 years, we're still seeing the negative effects of fathers' engagements in their kids' life after divorce. It's striking. Striking. Now, you might be thinking, oh, you guys are trying to tell me that I should never divorce. No, that's not it. We're just saying that there are things you definitely need to consider as you make this decision. One of which we just said, good person, bad person. Second thing is, think about 10 days, 10 months, and 10 years down the line. And another thing is if your spouse is involved with somebody uh, emotionally connected, at some point, that's going to fade. 
And that's something that you need to talk about that we'll talk about when you talk about some of these questions down here. So, Kimberly, let's go ahead and get to some questions. We have some more points we can make. But let's look at the first question here about a lady trying to decide, should I walk away from a marriage where my spouse has committed infidelity? He's been unfaithful. Hey, everyone. My name is Scott, and I'm a client representative here at Marriage Helper, which means I do strategy calls with people and help connect them to our best resources for their particular situations. Dr. Beam and Kimberly Holmes have asked me to read a question that was submitted by one of our listeners for today's episode. This question was submitted by Sandra. She asks, is it a positive sign that three years into her husband's affair, he is now interacting with her more in a friendly way? He's even been offering to help out financially, which he's never done before. During his affair, her husband consistently kept in contact and they have had a false start. But as time goes on, she is starting to feel more disconnected. The point I was making just before we went to the question was that when a person's emotionally connected to another person, it tends to fade at some point. Statistically speaking, if you start looking at the research, those kind of things, we call them limerent affairs. And you can find out about that by going to our YouTube channel, YouTube slash Marriage Helper. That limerents will last somewhere between three months and 48 months. Uh, only a handful of times in, in the decades that I've been working with marriages, have I ever seen it go past 36 months. I think probably four or five times out of all the thousands and thousands of couples I've worked with that it went past 36 months. And typically you see most affairs coming to an end, if not beforehand, by three years. And so when she says, okay, he's three years into it, then all likelihood that thing is fading. In all likelihood, that's moving away. And some of the demonstration of that is, okay, he's being friendlier with me now. Mm -hmm. Good. He's offering to help out financially. That means that he's actually moving back towards you. She said, you know, he never did that before. Now, he consistently kept in contact. And one time we tried to false, we tried to start, but it didn't work. It was a false start. But that's not unusual either. Most people who attempt reconciliation don't know how to do it. We've discovered that. And and because they don't know how to do it and they attempt it and it doesn't work, they think, oh, it's impossible. It's never going to happen. We can actually show you a methodology for reconciliation that does work, that if you're going to do it, this is the way you do it, increases the likelihood of it working out dramatically. So we look at this and say, okay, the fact that it's happening is probably because of the fact that his emotions so that other woman are fading and he's missing his family, and he's moving back toward you. Now, Kimberly, why do you think at this point she's feeling more disconnected with him? Now, other than the fact it's been three years, he's moving toward her, and now emotionally she's moving away from him. What would you think? There's a couple of reasons. The first is she's beginning to tire out. I mean, this has been a three long years of her trying to do all the right things, And now it's finally working. And here's the interesting thing. And we see this a decent amount of time that is that someone will do the work. They will do everything to save their marriage. And then when their spouse starts coming back to them, (laughs) it's kind of like they love the pursuit or they want the pursuit. They want their spouse to come back because they don't want to be abandoned. They don't want to lose the relationship. They don't want to lose the marriage. But then when they start coming back, they realize I have options. I don't have to take them back. I don't, I could choose to go and do something else. And that is what we try and help protect people against because we want them to follow through with the whole thing of, yes, now they're coming back and you're going to realize and feel the pain even more and realize that maybe you, you know, you're going to ask yourself questions like, do I have to take them back? Do, is this really what I want? And so we want to protect people in making those right decisions to continue through and actually restore and reconcile the relationship. It's like for all the time that they were moving the other direction, people will bury their emotions. They don't want to hurt so badly. So they bury their anger. They bury their hurt, bury their pain as much as they can. And then when a person starts moving back, as you said, they're tired, they're emotionally tired, physically tired, all kinds of tired going on there. And then those emotions begin to resurface, including the anger. It's like, now I'm, I'm feeling again the hurt you caused me. I don't like you. 
I'm feeling the anger again from the hurt you caused me. I don't like you. I don't want to be around you. So the fact that she feels more disconnected is normal. Understand it. What you're feeling is not abnormal whatsoever. Does it mean that the marriage can't be put back together? And the answer is actually no. It still can. You have to deal with those emotions. And, and we can help you do that. There are others that can help you do that. If you want to just deal with those emotions, the people out there that, that are equipped and can handle helping you deal with those emotions. But in a situation like this, uh, basically what she's saying is, I don't know if I want to do this or not. And it's definitely your decision. But understand that, as we said earlier, that ask yourself the question, is the good man finally demonstrating himself again? Or is he a bad man? And the other thing is, okay, uh, these slimmer things end mm -hmm, somewhere around three to four years, if not before, mm -hmm, then there's a good indication this might be ending. Mm -hmm. And then think 10, 10, 10. What's your future going to be like if you do work it out? How would you feel about it 10 days, 10 months, 10 years? What will your future be like if you choose not to work it out? 10 days, 10 months, 10 years. And what will be the future of other people who are directly connected to it? Now, don't, I'm not trying to make you feel guilty or responsible for other people. Obviously, if you have children, you do have responsibilities there. I don't mean to take that away either. But we're saying just think things through like that. So in this particular case, Kimberly, it sounds to me that this one has a good shot at being put back together and made strong again. Can't guarantee it, but it's your appears to be going in that right direction. Do you agree? I absolutely agree. But that doesn't answer the question we started with. So at what time do you walk away from a marriage because of infidelity? We keep talking about, well, this is something you can do to overcome and make the marriage good after infidelity. So let's talk about another question here, which gets more into, well, do you walk away at some point? Let's listen to that question. Hi, my name is Priscilla and I work on the coaching team here at Marriage Helper. I coach couples and individuals through their marriage crisis. The following question was submitted to us by one of our listeners. Nell says, my husband says that saving this marriage and keeping our family together is what he wants, but I'm so tired. He's refused to give up interacting with other women and continues to lie even after being confronted. I don't know what to do. Should I give up on my marriage and our family? Now, this is quite a different sentiment and a different problem than the question from the listener right before, because we have a person now who isn't owning up to things. As long as this listener is telling the truth that he's actually continuing to have side chicks and lying about it, and she's not just making it up because she thinks it's what's happening. If she actually has proof that this is happening, then this is a person who's continuing to engage in harmful behavior to himself, but also to his family. And this is where you have to start making difficult decisions. Mm -hmm. We know that, that when these kind of things happen, that you hurt. We also talk about a level that we call damage. Let me see if I can explain. If you or your children, if you have them, begin to be affected physically by your husband's actions. In other words, you, you begin to have more problems with your immune system because you stay stressed all the time and therefore you're getting sick more often. So physically it's affecting you or if it's doing it to the children because they're now beginning to have problems they didn't have before. And those problems are becoming not just hurt, but damage because we understand the whole thing hurts, but now it's damaging you physically. It could even be damaging your spouse physically. That becomes a factor, believe it or not. Or intellectually, this is our pies thing that Kimberly has a, a podcast about. We'll tell you about, about pies that you can study. But intellectually, is it getting it to the point where that now you can't function well in life? You can't keep your job because of the fact that you can't pay attention to what you're doing. Or you find yourself doing things that are dangerous because of the fact that you're not paying enough attention. So you turn on the stove, but uh, you forget to turn it back off or any number of things like that, because you're so preoccupied with what's going on that intellectually you're not functioning at a level that's good. In other words, potential or actual real damage is occurring to you and or your children if they're involved. And then e emotionally, if you're having terrible depression, 
uh, where you're having to take meds for it and, and it's like not getting any better at all. Or, uh, emotionally, you find yourself so distraught all the time that you really can't deal well with other people in your world, et cetera, et cetera. Or spiritually, that whatever your relationship is in terms of your beliefs and values are beginning to erode, beginning to go away. That because of what's happening, rather than being the person that you believe you should be, you're now doing things that are against your beliefs and values, or at least contemplating doing things against your beliefs and values to the point where that is spiritually damaging you. Then our recommendation is at that point, if damage is being done to you or anybody else that's important to you in this situation, it would be time to walk away. Now, what do you think about that, Kimberly? Yeah, I have, I have a lot of questions about it because don't you think that when someone first finds out about a marriage crisis, so for th especially things that are events, like they found out about an affair, they found out about an addiction, that they're going to experience a set of those things. Physically, they can't eat. They're worried all the time. They're not sleeping. Intellectually, they can't concentrate. That that's going to happen for a period of time. And that's normal. But there comes a point where you where you will come back out from that, even if the situation hasn't changed. And but if it continues for like months or years, that's where we call it damage. That's where I think we need to define more of because some people might say, well, I found out last week and that's exactly what, what I'm experiencing. So, yes, I'm being damaged. I should walk away. But I don't know. That's what we're saying. No, that's an extremely good point. I would tie time to it, you know, in the DSM-5, uh, the Diagnostics and Statistic Manual used by counselors and therapists, and they start talking about mental uh, problems, emotional problems, psychological problems, neurological problems, those kinds of things in there. Typically, they will say over a period of, of uh, two months or something like that. In other words, it's, it's not the immediate short-term thing because you're right. Very good point. That can happen to anybody, and it feels like, a personal hell. It's when it continues and you don't find any way to get past it. In other words, rather than, than going through a dip and then beginning to feel how, find out how to cope with life, you go into the dip and you, or like I say, your children live in that dip, then changing the situation is something we would recommend. I think it's an excellent point. I'm glad you made that. Are we, are, am I still not making it clear enough or do we need to clarify it more? No, I, I believe you are. The one thing I would add to that is, is sometimes your spouse will continue doing things that will, that will be damaging. So they will continue some of these negative behaviors towards you. And that could, it, that could lead you even further to this should I walk away? So maybe they continue spending all of the money. They continue to have sex with multiple people. They continue to just berate and harass you and tell you terrible things about yourself. But then there's sometimes where your spouse just kind of is doing what they're doing and they're not really like, they're not spending all your money. Maybe they're still involved in an affair, but they're being kind and cordial to you. Those are I believe you handle those differently. And that goes back to what we were saying earlier, right? Of is my spouse a good person, but right now they're doing some bad things versus are they a bad person? And they're continuing to exhibit that and how they treat me or the children. And that can really help you make this decision for you. We can't make this decision for you. No one can make this decision for you. You have to don't let anybody decision. make that decision for you. Yeah. But this is also another very good point there, Kimberly, in the sense that, if you're being physically damaged by your spouse, you have, or if your children, if you have children are being physically damaged by your spouse, then you've got to get to safety. Mm -hmm. You you can't continue to live in that. It's not going to fix itself. Mm -hmm. And we recommend the domestic abuse hotline. Or as you were saying, if your spouse is damaging you or your children, if you have them intellectually, emotionally, spiritually, not just by the situation, but by the things they're doing, we would definitely recommend that you get to safety. Absolutely. You know, people sometimes say, well, I'm trying to decide whether I should separate or not. On our YouTube channel, we have a video about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know whether you should separate or not. And, and that's something you can go find right after this particular episode, if you wish to on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So you know, understanding the point we're saying, it's always your choice. We suggest you not do it just based on hurt. We suggest that you think in terms of damage and not just the way that it feels to begin with, but how it's affecting you over time.
or even to begin with, if your spouse is doing it to you, damaging you physically, intellectually, emotionally, spiritually. Kimberly, how can they find out more about pies if they want to know more about what we're talking about here, the physical, intellectual, emotional, spiritual? Yes. I have a whole podcast about it. It is called, it starts with attraction because at Marriage Helper, we teach that there are four areas of attraction, the pies of attraction, and that it is the first step of the process to falling in love. So the podcast, it starts with attraction is really all about looking at you as an individual and things that you can do to feel the best that you can and to be the best that you can in those four areas. So it's more of a self-development podcast for anyone in any situation go and listen to the episodes. There's a ton of different types of episode. We talk about mindfulness. We talk about exercises. We talk about emotional attraction, bunch of different things. So go and check it out anywhere you're listening to this podcast. You can go and find it starts with attraction. People don't leave what they have unless they believe what they're going to is better. So think about it in terms of that to sum up everything we've said in this episode. Is it better? If you're divorced, is it better? If so, why? And be sure to think not just in the short term, like 10 days, even a little bit longer, 10 months, but in terms of 10 years, is this the best thing for me or the people that I love? Be careful about listening to advice from others. You just decide, which do I believe is really better? And if you really want to try to save the marriage, if you want to give it a shot, we'll do everything we can to help you. So Kimberly, why don't you tell them how we can do that while you kind of uh, give the key takeaways from this particular episode. Here are the key points that we made in today's episode that we want you to walk away with. Ask yourself if your spouse is a good person who is doing a bad thing or if they are a bad person doing a bad thing. Those are key things for you to understand in determining the next step that you're going to take. Second, remember to think 10, 10, 10 for yourself And for anyone that you care about, how they will be affected, whether you choose to stay married or choose to divorce. And I would even challenge you to do that as an action step from this episode. Take some time over the next week to make those lists. Not Do not make them in places that other people can find them, but try and keep those private and, and really consider those things and find mentorship to help you think through that. Our marriage coaches could be great, non-biased people who are pro-marriage, but also pro you being safe to help you see that from a different lens. Also third, remember that emotional connections, which we call limerence, will end over time. So take that into consideration as you're thinking about the state you're in now versus the future state that you could be in if the limerence were to end. Fourth, when you or your children are being damaged physically, intellectually, emotionally, or spiritually, you have to get safe. And that might be an indicating factor of whether or not you need to walk away from the marriage. And finally, remember that people don't leave what they have unless they believe what they are going to is better. A big question we have for you right now is how does this apply to you? How does this apply to your situation? Are you being the better that maybe your spouse would want to come back to and realize what your situation is right now? What can you do to make the situation as better as you can, but to be the better that would attract your spouse back, if it possible, they can be attracted back. And if you need help, we are here to help. We have our online courses, we have our coaching, we have our amazing marriage helper turnaround weekend, all of which we have for you in the situation that you're in. Even if you're saying, I don't know if I wanna save the marriage, all of our products and services can help you make that decision in the best way possible. And so how would they find out about what we offer? Great question. The best way that you can get connected with the things that we offer at Marriage Helper and learn more is by setting up a time to speak with one of our client relations reps who will listen to what your situation is, a brief summary of it, so that they can really understand what we do that would serve you best and get you the results that you're looking for. So we want to have that personal touch with you so that we can really understand and connect you with the best goal that you have for yourself and that will lead to that outcome that you're looking for, whatever that is. So we want to talk to you, schedule that time, talk with one of the people on our team. We appreciate you being part of our relationship radio program. Uh, We're already lining out all the programs for the rest of this season, but we'll soon start preparing for the next season. We love helping people 
we'd love to help you. Thank you, Kimberly, for being part of this program. I know you had to make time to do it. You're so busy. I'm Dr. Joe Beam, along with Kimberly Holmes, saying we care. Thank you for joining us for this week's episode of Relationship Radio. Please refer to the notes in the description to learn more about any resources mentioned in this episode. Please visit our website at marriagehelper.com for more information about our online courses, marriage workshops, and coaching. If you would like immediate help for your marriage situation, then click on the link on the screen to schedule a free marriage strategy call with one of our team members. We exist to help save marriages and strengthen families. We look forward to interacting with you on the next episode of Relationship Radio.